What do I think about weight loss? I think that not everyone needs to lose weight, but everyone needs to understand that excess body fat, including skinny people that might not be able to see their body fat. It could be packed like peanuts inside a thin frame. Like, okay, you go to FedEx, you're going to ship, you know, some long fluorescent lights. You're going to put the lights in the box. You're going to add peanuts and you can overpack peanuts, tape it up, still a skinny box, but it's way overstuffed and in our skinny bodies in a skinny body. You can have that, those extra peanuts, that harmful fat choking your organs and releasing really harmful inflammatory substances. So here's what I think. I think we should all try to aim at getting back to our baseline metabolism so we can be who our body wants us to be from a metabolic perspective. And part of that is by fighting extra body fat. We can do this with exercise and you mean to stay active, but we can also do that with by eating food. And so this is the kind of the irony of what I write about. You can eat to beat your fat. And there's even more surprises because you can actually harness and leverage good fat to burn down bad fat. And so this is there's all these series, really surprises that turn the equation around. Don't fear your food. Use your food. Don't fear your fat because we need some fat to, to live. You need to tame your fat. And so on and so forth as it relates to weight loss. Yeah, I'll give you a couple of examples. So first of all, in my book, I read about 150 foods. I think this is the first book that I ever did is 150 foods that have been shown by human clinical research that they can actually improve your metabolism, decrease the amount of body fat, reduce your waistline, and improve things like your blood sugars and your insulin sensitivity and the healthy hormones that relate to your metabolism, okay? And so I think this is the first book ever to put together this compendium of all these foods. So let's pick a few out, okay? Because we don't have time to go through all of them, but I'll pick a few standouts, all right? Turns out tomatoes have a lot of good things about them. They're a great source of vitamin C. They're, they do have some dietary fiber. But they also have these bioactive natural chemicals called carotenoids, one of them called lycopene. Lycopene, many people might have heard about, but lycopene is a fat-fighting bioactive. Here's what it does. It actually takes our harmful fat and helps to burn it down by activating a special kind of fat we have in our body called brown fat. So brown fat can, good fat can burn down white fat, which is harmful fat, dangerous fat, and eating tomatoes will light that up. It kind of lights up the space heater and uses fuel so you can improve your metabolism, improves your metabolic profile overall, lowers bad cholesterol. This is all with tomato and actually shrinks your waistline as well. One study that was done actually took normal, healthy young women who were not overweight or obese, okay, because many researchers, many, much, a lot of research is done with people who are already overweight, but this is actually taking young, healthy female grad students who don't have extra weight. They're considered normal body size, whatever that means. Okay. That, that, that can be debated, but the bottom line is that they had just one tomato to eat before lunch every day, and they were able to lose weight and improve their metabolism. Very achievable dosing. So tomato can actually do it. Here's another one. Strawberries have also been shown to actually improve your metabolism. And what's really interesting by eating strawberries is that although strawberries can be sweet, when they measured blood sugar, eating strawberries in a way to improve your metabolism, not only decreased weight and uh, waist size and lowered weight and decreased body fat, it also didn't raise blood sugar. So this whole idea, another kind of like common idea that's kind of a uh, kind of like a paintbrush idea, and eh, don't eat fruit, it's got too much sugar in it, it's got too much fructose. It might kind of sound like it makes sense, on a casual level, but the science actually doesn't show that. And the reason is that the bioactives in the strawberry activate your body so it starts to burn down the bad fat. Now, okay, so you can actually metabolize even faster. This is, by the way, not about trying to become a supermodel. This is about optimizing your engine of your body. And I think that's something that we really want to be able to emphasize. Look, people that want to actually look like, you know, a supermodel, they want to fit into a bikini body back, they need to get into a wedding dress. They need to actually get you go for a, a bodybuilding competition. Those are short-term things that people do extreme things for. Okay, I'm not categorically against that. I'm just saying that, and what I write about in my book, "It to Be Your Diet," is we should all be trying to do things that are good for our health over the course of our 
lifetime if we want to live long and prosper and thrive. This is what longevity is all about. So another food that can actually actually have incredible benefits is actually tea. The sipping green tea actually has been shown to decrease excess body fat as well. So remember I told you this experiment where you know you when you remove the effects of body fat, your real metabolism starts to shine. And when you add unhealthy foods and you add extra fat back, you'll start to suppress your metabolism. So this is really the concept. We have a hardware program inside us that goes through four phases of metabolism. If you want to be all you can be, work on the sum of the body fat, work on the metabolism. You can eat foods like tomatoes and strawberries and green tea. And there's 150 other foods, including seafoods that I have in there, that can all work in harmony to help you get there. And so this isn't about a fad diet. This is really about a lifestyle and trying to embrace and enjoy your life as well. Let me explain how your body, how food can fire up your body's metabolism. So I'm going to take you back to body fat. Like, you know, again, I'm not a diet person. In fact, I don't really like fad diets and trend diets and crash diets. And, you know, like anyone else, I have stepped out of the shower and out of the corner of my eye. I see something on my body in the mirror that I'm like, yeah, I don't like that. I, I, I got to get in a better shape or I got to get in a better diet. Like, I mean, it's, it happens to all of us, right? That's a common thing. And then you step on a scale and the number that comes up isn't the number that you had hoped for. So you feel right away from the get-go, like, oh man, I got to, I'm disappointed. I got to do something about it. Well, I can tell you that in my book, what I want people to realize is so that science is empowering us because you can buy these metabolism activating, fight fatting foods right in our grocery store. So in the book, I actually... The whole second section of the book, if you're anybody who wants to like have surprise and delight, I write the book as if, you, if I invited you, like when you were a kid, to jump into the grocery cart. I'm going to take you on a tour of the grocery store. I invite you like a, like a kid to jump into like your mom's grocery cart where she's pushing you around. What I do is I whisper in your ear and tell you what to put in the cart. So you go to the produce section and there are foods that are like tomatoes that have lycopene that actually dissolve into your body fat within an hour or so after you eat the tomato and that lycopene turns on your body fat and what it does it, it doesn't turn on the jiggly fat it turns on the kind of fat called brown fat and brown fat isn't jiggly it's not lumpy bumpy and it's paper thin and it's pressed along your neck under your breastplate under your arms a little bit behind your back a little bit in your belly and when the lycopene from tomatoes and other foods will actually get to your fat it lights up the fat like the striker you have on a gas oven. You know, you click it, click, 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 whoosh. When that brown fat lights up, it's literally burning. It's thermogenic, meaning it's a space heater. It creates heat. In order to create heat to fire up, it has to draw energy, right? Just like a space heater does, you got to plug it in. Or just like your gas range does, it draws down the gas from a gas tank. Now, in this case, your brown fat, when it fires up due to food, okay, which could be tomatoes, could be chili peppers, by the way, Serrano chilies, Ancho chilies, Anaheim chilies will all do this in their own way. Fires up the brown fat. And where does that your brown fat draw its fuel from? It draws it from the harmful fat that stored extra energy. So good fat, brown fat will burn down harmful fat, white fat, jiggly fat, and it draws it right down. And the first place it goes is from the most dangerous kind of fat that's stuck inside your body. All right. So foods like tomatoes, ancho peppers, avocado, broccoli, bok choy, onions, garlics, green onions, red onions. These are all foods that you would see in the grocery store. Tangerines, lemons, watermelon. You know, sound familiar? Anyone listening to this? These are actually, science has shown, these are metabolizing, metabolism activating foods. They trigger your brown fat to start turning on its space heater function to burn down extra fuel. 